What's up guys, it's Blaze from Funbox here, and we are now in part 3 of the uh, attack menu and targeting uh, section. We're actually almost finished, so we can almost start um, testing out the code to see if it works, and if it does, then that's good. If it doesn't, then I'll look like a big fool. But um, what we're going to do with this one is we're going to start with the global left released here. Um, and then we'll start writing out the actual functions for both attack and cancel. And then if there's anything that needs fixing, I will fix it then. All right, so let's first start off with this. Uh, this is good, um, but what we need to do is we need to do a couple of things just a little bit different. Because we are doing um, targeting, we need to first check to see if we are targeting, right? If we are doing global dot targeting. And then of course we need to be able to select a specific unit. So we can't just run this code as is. In fact, we need to change the entire, well, we don't need to change the entire thing, but there's a lot of stuff that we do need to swap out. So let's minimize this. Actually, you know what? I will, I will put all of that in, in a special code block so that I can comment it out. And if we do need to fall back on it, we haven't completely deleted all, all this attacking code. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write out how it will look in the after, uh, and then we'll go through it line by line. Okay, so here we go. Let's take a look at it. It's almost, it's pretty much completely different now. Yeah. So first thing, we're going to check to see if we are targeting. Now, keep in mind that we don't need to check for allow input anymore because, well, for one, we can only target if input is allowed. So we don't need to check for allow input anymore. The second thing that we're going to do is we're going to check to see if our mouse cursor is in contact with anything that is a child of P unit. So that includes our O player. And if it is, we're going to store that ID into a variable. Now, if that unit is not selected, we're going to reset our selected targets. Eventually, this will be a list, but for now, we'll keep it as a, a single uh, object ID. And then with the selected unit, we're going to run the attack code, right? We're going to change its state. We're going to play the animation. And then after that, we're going to add the global.selected targets. Um, we're going to set that to whichever unit that uh, object is, okay? So that's, that's basically it. All right, remember that this unit cannot be the currently selected unit. And we've put a whole bunch of checks in place to make sure that it isn't. But the more safety nets that you have, at least if you're a beginner, then the better that is for you guys. Okay, so we're pretty much done with the manager with this block of code. The next thing and the focus of this video will be the actual buttons themselves. Now these things will do a lot of work. So what I'm going to do is I'll maximize them here. And you know, let's start with the attack button. All right, so let's start here and we'll take it line by line. And then we'll, we'll talk, I'll explain it just a little bit more from there. Okay, so here's our first bit. The first thing that we're going to do is set the global.targeting variable to true because we haven't actually set it to true anywhere in our game yet. Logically speaking, if you think about it, you can only start targeting units after clicking the attack button. So that's what we're going to do. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to run a for loop that of all of the units. And what we're going to do is we're going to put whichever units are eligible into the potential targets list. So the global dot targets. All right, so here we go. We are, we're having a look at the, we're getting the ID of that instance and storing it in a local variable. We're then going to check to see if that instance ID is not the selected unit. And if it isn't the selected unit, then we add it to the targets list, right? So that's how we add potential targets to our targets list. 
Then the next thing that we're going to do is we actually need to change from the base UI to the targeting UI. And we do that almost in the same way that we did it with the manager in the step event. Okay, so let's take a look at this. First, we're gonna run an if statement. So with the manager, we need to disable input as it says here. We then need to turn off the base UI. Then we need to turn on the targeting UI and then we need to re-enable input, right? So th that's basically what this does. We can't test it just yet, uh, so let's keep going. The next step is, of course, the cancel button itself. Now, this one is almost the same as just doing this section here, but with a few differences. Okay, so let's take a look here. We have global.targeting is set to false. So obviously, when we click the cancel button, we can't be targeting units anymore, so we need to make sure that that's false. The next thing that we're going to do is we need to clear all the targets because obviously we haven't gone through the main combat loop and so we can't actually get to, if I can pull it up, we don't actually get to the end turn. We're just flipping between UIs. And so to prevent any errors from happening, we're going to clear the targets list when we click the cancel button. And then just like above here, we're going to run event user one, which will re-enable the target UI, uh, the base UI. And if, if the target UI is visible, then we're going to run event two. You might be wondering why is this the way that it is? Um, to be honest, I'm not sure. Whenever I tried to run the code, this particular code, just like up here, um, I would get some really weird visual errors. And so I, I don't know why, to be honest, but I found that this, writing the code like this, actually worked in my favor. So I don't know, you might want to try to see if this, these four lines of code running these four events down here, instead of these will work. Um, but for me, it didn't. I got some really, really weird errors. Uh, and so I just, uh, I stuck with this is basically what I'm saying. All right, so that's that's pretty much it for all of the code. You can save that out. I guess we can try and see what our game code looks like. Okay, so everything looks good. We have a unit selected. And if I just click anywhere on the screen, nothing happens, which is expected. If we click on the attack button we hold and we move out, we can see that we don't go into targeting. But if we actually do click, we can now see that we have the cancel button. We can highlight, which is good. And we can now hover over these specific units, which is great. And we obviously can't target ourselves. Now that's exactly what we wanted. All right. All right, let's try canceling out. Good, it works. All right, and we can't highlight all of these units anymore, which is good. All right, now let's try attacking a unit and see what happens. There we go. Now we have control over whether a unit can attack someone and we can also control which unit gets attacked. All right, so that's it for the weapons, not the weapons, the attack menu and the targeting system. The next section will be about doing defense. We need to set up our defense for that. And then after that, we're going to set up skills. So we're, we're almost done. The only thing that we have to do now would be implementing the teams as well as creating an AI, a very basic AI system. And after that, we're finished with the RPG combat system. So. If you guys are ready to get into the defense system, then please do make sure to subscribe to the channel, leave a like on this video. If you guys have any suggestions or maybe you guys figured out another way that we can implement some of these systems, I'd really love to know your thoughts on that. And uh, so do leave them in the comments section below. Anyway, guys, I hope you guys are looking forward to the next one. This, this particular section was really tough to get through, but I have to say it's not going to be the, it's not the most difficult, but it's not the easiest thing to implement either. So uh, yeah, 
If you guys are ready for the next one, then I hope to see you in the next video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. See you later. Bye-bye.